College football playoffs are underway. The semifinals are done. Let's take a look back at both games and look at eight prospects I think the Jets should take a look at. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets! Welcome in. My name is Ryan. I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, I want to take a look at the college football playoffs. We got the semifinals yesterday, so we got to take a look at some prospects that are coming out in the NFL draft. That's right, NFL draft time. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Uh, I look forward to this every time of year because I don't have a whole lot to look forward to with the Jets actual playoffs. So the college football playoffs gives a good opportunity to see some of these top prospects and some of them going against the best competition in the country is a good way to evaluate uh, our prospects here. So I want to take a look at eight prospects. I d broke this up by way of quarterback, offensive line, and wide receiver. So I'll, I'll tell you all about the different prospects, where they're going to rank, how they performed, and what I think the Jets should kind of do on this. Now, the games that were played yesterday. Alabama loses to Michigan 27 to 20 in overtime and Texas loses to Washington 37 to 31. That one wound up being way closer than I thought it was going to end up being really good games all the way around yesterday. I can't wait till they actually expand the playoffs for college. This is going to be a real treat moving forward. So first and foremost, let's hop into the most pressing need for the New York Jets. I think for, uh, for a lot of people, this is going to be offensive line side of things. Now, the two names I want to take a look at J.C. Latham and Troy Fatanu. J.C. Latham, six foot six, three hundred and sixty pounds. He is the right tackle from the Alabama Crimson Tide. He is he got a seventy eight point seven versus Georgia in the SEC title game, and then a sixty nine point zero against Michigan. And he's graded out to be a first rounder. They're projecting him somewhere around pick fifteen to 30 is kind of where I've seen him ranked. I think he's going to wind up moving his way up the draft board. And I think ultimately he's going to go somewhere near the top 10, right around where the Jets, I think are going to end up picking. And then Troy Fatano on the other side with Washington, other game, I should say, uh, but left tackle six foot four, 317 pounds, had a 66.1 against Oregon in the PAC 12 title game, and then had a 69.3 versus Texas yesterday he's projected to be about a second round grade. So it kind of depends on how you want the Jets to attack this. As far as flexibility, both players do provide some level of flexibility. Although I would say Troy has a little bit, I shouldn't say a little bit more flexibility. He played like two snaps at right tackle, but he's the left tackle and he's played left guard. JC Latham on the other side has basically exclusively been a right tackle, but he's also played right guard. And he actually has more snaps at guard than Fatanu does, believe it or not. Uh, it's not a crazy difference. It's like 150, 135 snaps for Latham and about a hundred or so for, uh, Fatanu. but a little bit of positional flexibility, that tackle and guard hybrid. I do like that. I think that's really cool for the NFL level. That's kind of what we're seeing with AVT. And it's a little bit of positional flexibility on the interior with Joe Tipman being able to play guard and center as well. So I think the jets are going to like both these particular prospects. It's just a matter of where you want to take them. JC Latham, probably going to have to be selected with your first round pick, or if you trade down from, you know, inside the top 10, you want to pick a middle of the round, maybe you pick up a second round pick or you trade Bryce Huff and you get up, get a second round pick and you take a different player in the first round. And then maybe you target Troy Fatanu in the second round. There's going to be a few different ways the Jets could go with this, but either way, I like both players. I thought they both played well yesterday. Now, as far as wide receivers go, there's going to be a few names to take a look at. You're going to look at Romeo or Romy, Rome Odunes, Addy Mitchell, and Xavier Worthy. Now, they all provide slightly different things across the board. Romo Dunes is the highest level of wide receiver that we got to see play yesterday. That is six foot three, 215 pounds. He was projected to be a first round pick, probably top half, top 20 pick or so. This guy's really good, good size profile, had a really good season, 1500 yards, 13 touchdowns, 76.9 versus Oregon, 73.8 versus Texas. So the guy has shown out in the two biggest games of his season. He has played 81% of his snaps out wide. He has 18% in the slot and 1% in line uh, blocking, I guess. So mainly a wide out receiver. That's kind of the same case with Addie Mitchell. Addie Mitchell has the same percentage with, you know, out wide versus slot percentage. He's six foot four, 196 pounds. He had a 65.4 versus Oklahoma State, 69.3 versus Washington State. And he's considered a first or second round prospect. It kind of depends on where you have uh, where I guess the combine shakes out and, and everything else. He's a transfer from Georgia. I actually really liked Addie Mitchell. And when I did my draft, mock draft, mock off season a few weeks ago, 
the the big boards I was using had him way lower than he is now. So he's first to second round. I really like him. Uh, guy jumps out of the gym. He had a catch where I thought he was going to, I thought he jumped too early and he still like high pointed the ball. He likes he had a, like a double jump in this game. Now, Xavier Worthy, Worthy, six foot, 172 pounds is more of a receiver that, look, I'll be honest. I want someone a little bit bigger body. I want someone a little bigger body. Not that the weight of 196 is very big or 215 is massive, but 172 is pretty light for a receiver. Uh, he had a thousand yards this season, had five touchdowns, 67.9 versus Oregon, 52.5 versus, uh, it says Texas. It should have been Washington, Ryan, not changing your updated things. So it's Oklahoma state and Washington is who they played, not Oregon versus Texas. So scratch <laughs> where are these games there, the pro football focus grades are right. Uh, and then he had a first or second round grade. So he's going to fall somewhere around the same spot as Addie Mitchell. I would say Mitchell would be my preference of these two particular wide receivers with Odunes being the, the top end option. If the Jets want to go with a wide receiver in the first round, he's probably the route I would go. If the Jets wind up getting a second round pick, maybe you look at one of Xavier Worthy or Addie Mitchell if they wind up falling. But I was uh, very pleased with, with, with what we got out of most of these guys. I thought they should have got Addie Mitchell involved a little bit earlier. He was getting pretty frustrated down near the, off, near the goal line, wound up asking for the ball, got a touchdown the very next play. But then at the end of the game, when they went back to him, Defender made a great swat right in front of him, but it would have been nice to see him kind of come down with that. Now, as far as the quarterbacks are concerned, there's going to be a few different storylines that we can kind of go into. The big one being Michael Penix Jr. from Washington. He had the really big game, but we're going to take a look at J.J. McCarthy and Quinn Ewers as well. Again, kind of depends what you want to do. Michael Penix probably not getting out of the first round. I would imagine based on how he played, scoot over this way, <laughs> get out of my, my own way here. Uh, I would say based on how he played yesterday, it would be surprising to see him fall to the second round. He's slightly older. I think he's 23 right now, going to be 24 for the start of the football season. Six foot three, 213 pounds. His biggest knock is really injuries. He's got two ACL injuries to the same knee, I believe. Uh, he had 4,652 yards this season, 35 touchdowns to nine interceptions, had a 75.5 versus Oregon and a 93.5 versus Texas. This dude looked cool, calm, and collected. Poise in the pocket, did not seem like he was shaken by pressure, just arm strength. It pops off the tape. This guy was really impressive. You're going to see him rise up draft boards and he should probably end up somewhere middle of the first round. So if the Jets solve everything in free agency for the off offensive line, maybe a trade down and you get, maybe you get a Devonta Adams in a trade down and you decide, Hey, we, you know, we've already got everything we need for this year. Let's develop this kid behind Aaron Rodgers. Maybe that's the route they go. I don't think the Jets will wind up being in on him, unfortunately, because guys seem super talented, but injuries scare me. And then also, uh, you know, how long are you going to have him sit behind Rodgers? I think that's that's probably a little questionable. J.J. McCarthy, six foot three, 202 pounds, had 2,851 yards this year, 22 touchdowns, four interceptions. He's making it to the title game. He took a shot on a trick play in this Alabama game, and he was cool, calm, and collected, and he got a whole head full of dirt uh, when he stood up. He had a 67.7 versus Iowa and a 65.1 versus Alabama. He's projected to be a second round prospect. I would keep an eye out for wherever Jim Harbaugh ends up. So I have a feeling he's coming out of college, going to end up either, I guess if he winds up with the Chargers, you're probably not drafting a quarterback there. But one of these teams, like maybe the Raiders, if he ends up in Vegas, maybe they decide to take J.J. McCarthy in the second round because that's where he's projected to go at this point in time. And then Quinn Ewers, the transfer from Ohio State, Six foot two, 195 pounds, had 3,462 yards this year. 22 touchdowns, six interceptions. He had a 71 point, 75.1 versus uh, Oklahoma State and a 80.6 versus Washington. He's projected to be a second round grade as well. He started off a little cooler and then they started coming back. Texas started coming back on Washington. I thought Washington got a little too cute towards the end of the game here. They started doing some trick plays with like 12 minutes left and it felt like they allowed... Texas to get back into this game. And it wound up coming down to the final play of the game. And Washington just wasn't able to move the ball the way they were early on in the game. So as far as I'm concerned, if the Jets wind up with a second round pick, I still think it's a little too high for either one of these guys. But if JJ McCarthy or Quinn Ewers falls to say the third round, now maybe you might be cooking a little more with fire because you're not so much talking about players that are going to be able to contribute this year from other positions, but you could at least groom someone who has a high upside to sit behind Aaron Rodgers. So as far as those prospects, I want to hear from you guys. What was your favorite prospect that you got to see yesterday? Did I even mention it? Maybe there's someone out there that I just did not click.
click on or, or, or dive deeper into, let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, go Jets. Jets!